Seven and welcome to video number three. Yes, I said video number one for the last video. It was video number two. This is video number three. And we are going to continue looking at things. So we have started out looking at variables and we know how to define those. Now we are going to look at selections. We're going to look at how to make decisions in Pascal. Now, selections in Pascal generally use if statements. If something happens, something is true, then something else can happen. Otherwise, a third thing can happen. So if condition is true, then something happens. And I need to appropriately tab that and capitalize that. Right. And if this condition is not true, then else something else happens. Now, Pascal has an interesting way of putting these. Uh, if we have only one line of code, then that's fine for the way this is laid out. But with Pascal, if we have a couple of lines of code, so if in our else statement something else happens and something more and this too, we actually need to set it up as if it's a new program. So we're actually defining this almost as if it's a new little part of the program by putting a begin and an end. <clears throat> and the difference being that for the regular end, this one actually uses a semicolon and not a full stop. So once again, we add an extra level of indentation for our um, uh, ease, of, ease, of, ease of sight, ease of, ease, of, ease of being able to see what we are looking at. Uh, but this is what our conditions look like. So our pseudocode will look something like this. Start. Oops. It's 11.30 at night. So forgive me if I'm mistyping a little bit. If some condition is true, then something happens. Else we want to begin and have something else happens. So for example, we're going to write a little program. And this is what the notes have. If the number two equals... Two, in pseudocode and in most uh, programming languages, when you are defining or when you are checking if something is actually equal to something else, you don't use one set of equals. I'll zoom in here. You use two. You use one set of equals to define the value of something. So when we go back in, going back here, <coughs> when we made our variables up, for example. We haven't done that yet. When we uh, pointed our variables, I can open the last piece of Pascal that we opened. So if I go back into our Pascal here, do, 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 and we're using read, we will, well, let's open Pascal because we need to get that open anyway. And then we open this from our exercise. We can see here that when we defined our variables, our variables were defined using a single equal sign. Now in Pascal, we also use the semi the, the full colon, but we used a single equal sign to define a value. Up here, had we wanted to define a value for these to start up with, we could use an equals and then a number here as well. That would be how we would define that value. Uh, in Pascal, obviously, you'd use a semicolon as well. But we're not going to be looking at that. So we're going to be making a new Pascal here and going back to our document. So if two is equal to the number two, we're going to display to the user um, the phrase two equals two as expected. However, in the other case, we're going to display to the user, huh, two doesn't equal two. How strange. We're also going to display, oops, I wonder if three equals three. Wouldn't that be strange? And yes, I should have put that one as TWO. We're not going to worry about that there. So. In our pseudocode, it's not necessarily incorrect to put the begin and end here. You would be okay for that, but it's not needed. So for our pseudocode, we can actually delete these lines. And that also means that we can delete a layer of indentation. So this is what our pseudocode will look like. And then we're going to end. That's the pseudocode for what we're about to program. Nice and simple, easy little question. If something is equal to something, then display this. Otherwise, display that.
All follow? Good. And this is what it looks like in our code. So let's start to work on our code. Now we're going to call this program if then else. So we again have to write in program. And it turns blue. This will be called if underscore then underscore else semicolon. And as usual, we save at the beginning. We have to save all the time. And this is going to be if then else with no spaces and no underscores. Again, we're going to be users CRT so that we can bring in our Windows uh, 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 command line features. And we are going to define variables, but we're only going to need one variable this time. We're going to define two, the number, two, the word two, as an integer. I'm using integers a couple of times here. Uh, the exercises will have you explore, exploring with reals and other things, but I'm just using integers to demonstrate how this works. So we have one integer here, and we have defined the word two as an integer. So we need to start our program, and we're going to write begin, not benign, begin to begin our program. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give a value to two. So we're going to actually define a value this time. So two is going to be given the value, <coughs> excuse me, given the value of two. Pretty simple. We're starting out with a defined value. Now, I've done this outside of where we have defined the variable for a very specific reason. It's because you want to leave these things separate from the variable def definitions. When you're programming in, in, in other languages where you can't do them as you as you define them up the top, uh, where you can't do set a default value where you define your variables. It's a good trick to get into to not fall into the trap of doing that all the time, is if you then start flagging around with one of the freelance languages that don't allow you to do that, you will fall into errors. So for now, we've just defined it at the beginning of our program. And when we are defining variables for the program, we usually put them up the top. It's a good style thing to get into, get used to the habit of leaving your variables at the beginning of the program. So two is defined as the number two. Then we have to ask our question, if two, T-W-O, equals two. Now in Pascal, when you're testing a uh, condition, we only have a single equal sign. The reason for that is because in Pascal, when we are assigning a value, we have a semicolon. When you're pseudocoding, I want to see two equal signs. For your pseudocode, I want the double equals there. When you're Pascaling, you have to use a single equals to define a variable. Now in Pascal, we actually have to say the word then. So if two equals two, then, and we're only going to have one line of text to write here. One, two, three, four, five. Right line. Uh, open bracket. And semicolon. Yeah. Uh, well, what did we put down here? Two equals two as expected. So let's just copy and paste that and fix that up. And our semicolon. So now because we've only got one line of text, we don't need to, one line of instruction for here. We don't need the begin and end. But if two is equal to two, then it will write two equals two as expected. So we can test this by going down here and putting our end. Full stop. I need to put a read line so that it doesn't just close the program on us. And we should be able to run this two equals two as expected. Pretty simple little program. That will be working fine. And remembering that my particular version of Windows Free Pascal, for some reason, opens two copies. But we want to have an else condition in there. So if 2 equals 2, if this is coming up as true, then that is how it will happen. But we want to have an else condition. So we will put in an else. Now, when we put our else's and such in, some people like to put their begin straight away. I don't. I like the extra layer of encapsulation of um, indentation. So I want you to be putting your begin in a line down. You don't have to leave a space, but I want you to be putting your begins in a line down and I want you to indent it because I want to be able to see 
that separation. The same as here in your uh, pseudocode, where you have your then and your else, I want this indent there because I can clearly see where these are lining up. Remember from the example that I showed you from our uh, from the Arduinos in the last video, that sometimes you will get long ones and uh, uh, nested ones, and I want to be able to see exactly where we're looking. So in here, we're going to begin, and we're going to, if the two does not equal two, we're going to write out some instructions. Now, we didn't use write very much last time, so I want to actually write two pieces, but I want to give it two commands to go on the same line. So I can use here write, open bracket, and what did we say here? Huh, two does not equal two. How strange. So let's just put this here. I'll put a capital there, and I'm going to put an ellipse in here. And that is our first line. Semicolon or end. So this is a write command, and like our write lines from our using read, uh, our read commands from using read, this will work on the same line. So if I then come down to my next line and put write line, open bracket, inverted commas, and then put a, I wonder if three equals three. <coughs> close and close, semicolon. That should be able to set up so that all of this will go on the one line. Now, as with anything, as with we learnt with Python and as we learnt with uh, other languages, uh, VBA last year, if you open a curly bracket, you have to close it. Well, the equivalent of the curly brackets here in Pascal are these begin and end functions. Now, our end in this particular case does not have a full stop like the end of the program. It has a semicolon. So if we then run this, we get an error. Why do we have an error? I have an error. I don't know why I have an error, because I have actually ended all of my if statement. In a strange thing with Pascal, if you put a semicolon at the end of a single line in if statements, so you put an if, a semicolon at the end of a single line, then it closes off the if statement. If you have multiple lines like this here, it's okay. But if you have an, a semicolon at the end of a single line like that, then it will ignore everything for the else statement. It will consider you closing that if statement off, and this else becomes inappropriate. It, the else becomes, an, as it says, else without if error. So here, we remove the semicolon, and now our program runs. Two equals two as expected. Pretty much what we wanted it to say, but now we're not getting to see that else statement. So let's change our value for two. Let's make our value for two five and see if we can get this else statement to run. <clears throat> and as we see, huh, two doesn't equal two. How strange. And it, as you can see there, because we have used right, not right line, there is no new lining between these two. I wonder if three equals three. Wouldn't that be strange? So once again, because we have used right here and not right line, we have no separation between these two statements being produced back to the user. So this is how we would set up a simple little program using an if statement. Now, why don't we combine that with what we did in the last lesson? Let's combine this so that we can actually have the user input a number. So let's go back up here to our begin and start by writing to the user. Um, please enter the number two. That is, after all, what we want them to enter. We want to ask if the number two equals the number two. And we've already done our read line in here. We can look back and say read line for number two. Well, it's the same thing here. We just overwrite this. Read line. Open bracket. Two. Close bracket. Semicolon. Let's see if it works. We missed a semicolon there. See, even the greats miss out on some things sometimes. Please enter the number two. I'm going to put in the number two. Two equals two, as expected. Boom. Just what we wanted. So when it runs a second time, let's see if we can make it work again. Two, please enter the number two. And enter the number five. Huh. Two doesn't equal two. How strange. I wonder if three equals three. 
that is exactly what we want it to do. The only thing I would change is out of space right there because then it just looks a little bit better. But for now, that is how we would do an if then else statement. So in a moment, I will record another video. In fact, I'll record tomorrow another video for you on how to use cases, which have many more options for uh, uh, decisions. But for now, that is how we use if then else's in Pascal. Again, any questions, feel free to contact me either through the Google Classroom or to email me directly. Catch us later.